Three types of ear creases have been described in medical literature and were linked to various cardiometabolic disorders such as heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. Firstly, a diagonal earlobe crease known as Frank's sign. Secondly, vertical creases in front of the ear. A single crease is termed anterior tragal line, whereas multiple creases are termed preauricular vertical creases. Finally, two creases located at the upper pole of the ear helix are known as the paired ear creases of the helix. The exact mechanism of development of such ear creases and their connection to cardiovascular disorders remain unclear. In this brief illustrated video, the author provides an anatomical explanation of the mechanism of development of ear creases and the likely cause that links ear creases to cardiometabolic diseases. First of all, it is essential to make a clear distinction between skin creases and skin folds. Skin creases are permanent and irreversible lines in the skin that develops secondary to prolonged traction by an underlying attachment to the underlying deep structures. Whereas skin folds are created by skin redundancy and are not necessarily permanent. Anatomically, just in front of the ear and on the outer aspect of the cheek lies deeply the buccal fat pad, which has the same histological composition as the abdominal visceral fat. Furthermore, the size of the buccal fat pad corresponds to the size of visceral fat independent of body weight. Of note, the buccal fat pad is strongly anchored to the skull via Lohr's ligament. In visceral obesity, the size of deep cheek fat of the buccal fat pad increases, causing lateral displacement of the parotid gland and Lohr's ligament tension. This results in skin redundancy of the cheek and pleating of the skin in front of the ear, creating the anterior tragal line and preauricular vertical creases. These are skin folds, not true creases. Furthermore, traction at the base of the earlobe's attachment and folding of the earlobe lead to creasing. Over the years or even decades of traction, the histopathological changes are set permanently, creating the diagonal earlobe crease or Frank's sign. With increasing facial visceral fat deposition, further auricular traction takes place. Therefore, the auricle is drawn in towards the point of Lohr's ligament anchorage at the base of the tragus. Such inward tension causes the internal collapse of the rigid cartilaginous helix, subsequently leading to its creasing at its weakest points, which creates the paired creases of the helix. The author herein proposes facial visceral obesity, particularly in the sideburn area of the cheek, as the common driver that explains the link between auricular creases and cardiometabolic disorders.